<laughs> Welcome in Mike Riccio. He is uh, out of Morgan County Delegate District 90. He's a candidate for office there. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Morning, Rob. How are you? Good to have you with us. Appreciate you making the drive in this morning. Thanks for having me. How was traffic getting through Hedgesville on Route 9? Yeah, it's fine. Piece of cake? Yeah. Yeah. What time, I, what time did you get here? Um, 7.15. Oh, so you made it pretty early. Yeah, I just didn't trust the traffic in Hedgesville. <laughs> All right. I don't blame you. It's a, it's going to be tough getting through there. All right, so first and foremost, you get an Italian name, so you moved to the head of the line here on the program. Good job on Sweet. that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your background a little bit, what got you to this point of deciding to run for office. Well, um, I'm a father. I'm a truck driver. I used to be a fireman. Um, I moved here because, well, I just pretty much wanted to live out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, thankfully, for my wife's sake, I got that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, because she just allowed me to pick the house. Okay. You're from Philly? Yes. Is your wife from Philly as well? Negative. Where's she from? She's from uh, just outside Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. So, we ironically met um, in one of the suburbs in Philadelphia and immediately kind of hit it off as friends, and then it kind of expanded. Tell me about your firefighting uh, career. Well, I have about 23 years of volunteer experience, mm -hmm. and um, I've seen a lot of horrific things um, from bad flash floods to hurricanes to fires where for lack of better terms um it's kind of gross and there's a body there and the skin just falls off it when you touch it mm -hmm. then i mean i wouldn't change any of that for the world um it's made me the person i am today it's also kind of given me the leadership abilities that i have and a lot of the knowledge that I have now because I don't look at everything like most people do. I see a car in a ditch and I just go, man, you know, if that person just put that phone down or especially nowadays, mm -hmm. but, um, it, because I was given the ability to take a lot of like, classes while during my fire career through the fire department I was with um, and I just gained a whole bunch of knowledge okay now tell me about your uh, your truck driver you do the long haul or are you home every day I'm home what? every day I uh, drive for a carrier from uh, with FedEx okay ground out of Hagerstown and I run up and down the 81 car every night and your decision to run for office have you ever run for an office before no and why this time um mainly because of uh my current delegates lack of transparency george miller george miller yes sir. um because my wife tried to contact him a couple times about some homeschool bills and a couple other things and when she didn't get any responses from him um or craig blair um i was just kind of like um and i wasn't used to that because coming from um where i from originally um from the suburbs of philadelphia i knew our representatives and i've met them many a times and you know I was used to an open relationship where, you know, you call them up, be like, hey, so-and-so, um, this is what's going on. Can, is there any way you can help me out? And every one of them would turn turn around and go, yep, what do you need? Anything you need. But you didn't get that response? I did not get that response from George Miller. I didn't get a response from George Miller. And, and what, what drives me nuts about this the most is because after all that, I even tried to call George um, when I decided to run for office with no response because he has his number as his office number in Charleston, which how do you serve your community with just an office number in Charleston that you don't answer? Because right now he's not in Charleston. So if you call that number, he's not answering. It's wrong. 
it's wrong and our we we deserve better from our elected representatives and i tell everybody i go listen like me or not i don't care i'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you the facts this is how it is this is what's going on you know you vote for me great if you don't i'm sorry i can't help you Describe your brand of Republicanism. We, we've kind of splintered into three or four different categories of Republicans as the supermajority has taken hold in the state. What kind of Republican are you, Mike? I am, a, I am a constitutional conservative. I believe in the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of West Virginia. And we should live by those. They're not just pieces of paper. They're not they're our founding documents. They're the most important things we have out there. You know, life for liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Are we are we not doing that now? I don't believe we are. I, I don't believe we're getting that now. Because kind of like I told you before the during the break, you know, they're kinda they're just chipping away at our freedoms. For slowly. example. For example, um and, and I don't like to talk bad about people that aren't here to defend themselves, but I did write some notes down, so I have them. So um, George Miller has a bill. It's House Bill 4503. That House Bill, um, essentially, for lack of better terms, and it is if you get into an accident, um, you have to submit to a blood draw and tell the officer what kind of medications you take. That's wrong. It violates your Fourth Amendment. Also HIPAA. I mean, how, how do you try to pass things that are unconstitutional without knowing that they're unconstitutional? And you have a second bill from, I read your website this weekend. You have a second bill that you also think it, it, it gives any, another example of this? Um, he's got another bill. Um, it is House Bill, forgive me, 4393. And that essentially, that bill makes it so that um, like retired teachers can work a full 180 days and collect a full pension and, you know, with, with no gap in pay. I don't have a problem with that, except why not fix the school system? Why, why not make it so instead of helping out the retired teachers, we figure out a way to bring in new teachers because from everybody I've talked to, from people on the school board, to even other delegates and Senate candidates. Everybody says it. Everybody understands and is in agreement that out here in Eastern Panhandle, we need good teachers. We need new teachers because we're not getting them. I was told by one teacher, he said, Mike, he goes, they walk into school, they might work a full day and they turn around and walk right out and never come back. He goes, I don't know why. Why do you suspect? I suspect that um, the pay is low, or they, or the pay is low because of what they have to deal with. And I disagree with all that, and mainly from the aspect that, you know, the parents need to start t pairing again, and, and stop putting back on the, the teachers because. It's like anything. You add something to somebody's job, you know, they're going to want to get paid more. It makes sense. So how do you do that as you're, you're running for an elected office? Yes. And uh, as a practical matter, as a delegate, what can you do to make parents more responsible parents to, to help their children? You know, we hear this a lot. We, we know what the problems are. Right. And then now we look to elected officials to find solutions. Do any ideas uh, here? Oh, I have I have a couple. Um, I know that I used to live in Loudoun County, um, and not that I'm happy, proud of that, but um, I'm a refugee from Fairfax County, so I understand the pain. Okay. So, <laughs> so, but they had a program, and I'm not sure of the details on it, but a little bit of it was so they have high school students that are going to college. And they want to be teachers. Well, they give them some kind of like stipend or something to make them essentially, you go to college, you come back here and you teach here. 
So why don't we do that in the Eastern Panhandle? I mean, Jefferson County has a very high median income now, very high. Um, and so, so to, so to, so they they have it here in Berkeley too, you know, and the Eastern Panhandle are only growing. The, the this and this part of the state it's exploding, and that's a great thing. Except when you know you don't want it to explode, and there's a lot of people that don't. But I got off track. Um, but why not do something like that and institute that in all the border counties? Bill? Yeah, I'm looking at your web page, Mike. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, let's go back to 4393. Yes, sir. Uh, you're talking about teachers being allowed to uh, collect a retirement while teaching. Yes. But then you say this bill threatens or infringes upon our freedom. How does that bill infringe upon their freedom, on our freedom? Well, it's essentially the way I see it, and, and forgive me for my terminology, but I, I see it as, you know, you're kind of double dipping and you know we're paying teachers they're they're already collecting their retirement plus they're collecting a full paycheck but that infringes on our on our freedom well it maybe not so much but we definitely are not for, for what we're putting into the school system, we're not getting back the same. And, well, that needs changed. Well, yeah, one way is locality pay. Every candidate we've had for the last four, five, six, ten years has said we need to do away with locality, I institute locality pay, uh, yet we're unable to do that. How would you, as a freshman delegate, how would you convince the folks that have been resisting this for the last 10 years for all of a sudden to change their mind and institute locality pay? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Fair I don't know the yeah. answer to that, honestly. Yeah. Um, it, it would literally take until I got there to kind of try to figure it out because, but, it, but it'd be my job to figure it out. Yeah. You're running against an uh, individual that spent his whole life in Morgan County, uh, has been part of the fabric for several years. How would you run against someone like George Miller? I just tell people the truth. And if you want to vote for me, great. If you don't. And the truth being what? The truth being about um, his bill 4503 um, and about how it takes away your Fourth Amendment rights. Because, well, they're all important to us. And because of uh, uh, if uh, someone's in an accident, you have to have the blood grown yes. to show the alcohol level. Yes. Okay. And there's, at the end of the day, you know, there's no reason for that. I, I understand that, you know, people, you know, the, you should leave it up to the officer to figure out whether or not he wants to have blood drawn from somebody from an accident victim. And you do that how? Just by observing the person? Yes. Will that stand up in court? Why not? I if, think you need a more qualified and need more quantitative, uh, quantitative uh, determination. I agree, but, but at the end of the day, you know, the officers are on the front lines. But between them and EMS, they should be able to figure it out. I just, I don't think it's our job as lawmakers, I guess, for lack of better terms, to tell people when that, at, at, after every accident, you need a blood draw. Well, no. Because what happens to that poor old lady that just bumped, ran into the back of you? And she didn't mean it because, you know, her foot slipped off the gas. I, I, I could be wrong, Mike, but I do not believe they uh, are, they take blood in every accident. I know. They take blood when the officer believes the person may be Impaired. Well, right. That's yeah. what I just said. Mike, one of your points on your website uh, says, and this is something we've been discussing on the show, uh, we cannot expect the federal government to find a proper solution for the collapse of Social Security and Medicare. The state no. must begin discussing a solution for this and soon. How can the state solve the federal government's impending problems 
with Social Security and Medicare? Well, we we could institute our own um, Medicare plan, and because from what I understand, our we have a influx of funding at the state level, and I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but um, we could start putting into that because I mean, at the end of the day. When Medicare goes away, you know, somebody needs to be able to pick up the slack. So how would you do that? Is the the taxpayer having this now withdrawn from their check in addition to what the feds are taking out? Or are you asking the state to kick in additional money? I think the state, well, I think at the state level, I think they could kick in funding to, to do that and keep just to keep it off the taxpayer. Because at the end of the day, you know. Every taxpayer complains about pay. Everybody pays, complains about paying taxes. You know, nobody likes it, and I get it. I don't like paying taxes, but you know, it's, it's part of life. If the state's kicking in money, though, and the only way the state can have money is by taking it from, the from tax, those who earn it, right. they are effectively then kicking in taxpayers' dollars. Right, but you can take it from your tourism dollars that we get so much of, apparently. Well, you've got 1.8 million residents. Right. So how much money are you prepared to set aside for their Social Security Supplemental, which is what you're talking about, which is a federal program, not a state. So how much much money are you looking to set aside here? This is a substantial investment that's bankrupting the country. Oh, right. Oh, I know. Why would it not also bankrupt the state even faster? It would. It it probably would bankrupt the state even faster. And, And thinking about it, because we have such a aging population... I, and I, I disagree when everybody's like, "Oh, but we we're, we're having new people move in. That's great. We have new people move in, but the new people that are moving in are older people. They're not young people. Our young people are moving out. Right. So, right. So, are you second guessing your decision? Yes, I kind of am. Okay. So, hey, you've got about a minute left or so, Mike. Go ahead and tell the people out there why they should vote for you in Delegate District Ninety. Um. Because at the end of the day, I'm not about taking your freedoms away. I want to preserve them because I want to preserve my freedoms. And well, that's about it. <laughs> Mike, how can people find out more about your campaign? Um, go to MikeRichio.net. Period, end of story. Period, end of story. All right, very good. Best of luck to you, Mike. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time, Rob. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you for having me. It is uh, 831.